stupid, insanely overpriced, not the future, nothing more than a luxury bobble that will appeal to a few gadget freaks. These are all things said by Apple's critics about the iPhone in 2007. It was a gimmicky, bloated, overpriced toy that didn't even have any buttons. Ridiculous. But then the iPhone went on to change the world, popularizing smartphones and changing the way we live our very lives. Does the Vision Pro have the same potential? Could this be a pivot point in technology? To get the answer, I bought a tax writer, I mean Vision Pro, to find out for myself. And the future looks red. Yes, I got one. And uh, that is actually not something I normally do. Um, I'm not a big early adopter kind of person on technology for the most part. Uh, I did not get the first iPhone. I didn't get the first smartwatch, Apple Watch. Um, so why did I spend the money to get this thing? Hey, I just wanted to chime in and say that I'm aware that the sound in this segment is kind of terrible. We had like an hour in the studio and we didn't check the recording level, so it's peaking all over the place. I'm sorry, I should be more professional than this, but anyway, this is what we got, so here you go. So I've talked a lot on my channel about like what's gonna be the next thing that takes the place of the smartphone. What is going to take over you know, technology and the way we interact with the world in the same way that the smartphone did. And I've been saying for a while, I think it's smart glasses. Now, I don't think this is the final thing. This is not the smart glasses that we're looking for. These are not the smart glasses you're looking for. So I'm gonna unbox this. I am not an unboxer. I don't do unboxing videos and many other people have done better jobs of this already. I can point out Marcus Brownlee just right off the top of my head. But uh, let me take this out and then we'll take a look at it. I'll try it on. We will see what it looks like, and then I'm going to spend a few days playing with it, and uh, I'll give you my, my film impressions. But first, I'm going to get it out of the box. Apple's packaging was immaculate as always, but we got through it and in no time had it ready to put on. I tried it on without the cord at first just to see if I could get the fit right, and then, looking at you, camera, it was time to plug it in. So I think you have to, like, put it on and twist it. I'll do it for the camera here. No, I did it the wrong way. Hmm. Huh. Oh, there we go. So I'm seeing a little graphical version of this in front of me and it's telling me to press and hold this and i think it actually physically moves the lenses inside to match my eyes just right so press and hold to align okay so there was a lot of setup that was required just like if you were setting up a new computer like basically if you've ever gotten a new ipad it's like that but you know floating in front of you and it does some eye calibrations. The point is, this went on for a while, and I couldn't record what I was seeing, so instead of you just watching me poke at the air for the next 30 minutes, let's just jump to the dinosaurs. Oh, a little baby dinosaur. Well, there's a little cute little baby dinosaur right there. Can, can I interact with the little dinosaur? It looks like it wants me to come over to it. You gonna, you gonna buy my fainter? It's sniffing me. Uh oh, something loud. Oh, it just slipped out the rock to point at a baby dinosaur. Oh, here we go. Here's a big bad guy. Encounter Dinosaurs is a little immersive experience that's on there just to basically make you say wow. And you've probably seen shots like this in plenty of other videos, and it's because you can actually screen record it, unlike some other immersive content on there. It's also a smart marketing move because people are sharing footage of it all over the place. And while, yes, dinosaurs are cool, what really got me was the way it interacts with your surroundings. Text hovers in front of the wall and casts shadows on the wall behind it. The screen lays flat against the wall and even wraps around the corner of the room. It's not just a big flat screen hovering in front of me, it's, it's embedded into the environment. Speaking of environments, you also have the option of no room whatsoever. When you turn the crown, you can get immersed completely in a landscape of your choice, including the moon. This is cool, but I did find myself using pass-through mode most of the time. 
And the fact that the Vision Pro effortlessly connects with your MacBook means that you can easily enter one of these environments and get work done, cut out distractions, which I'm especially prone to. So yeah, I mean, I could see how this could actually be a productivity tool, but that's only if the device is comfortable enough to wear for long periods of time. So let's look at how much this thing weighs. Okay, I wanted to get an idea of how heavy each of these headsets are because I've used this Quest 2 for a long time. Now this is not the newest one, this is the Quest 2, not the Quest 3. But um, it has this extra, this, this is like not a third party, but it's like an extra fancy uh, head strap on here. Does add a little bit of weight, but uh, probably not as much as this one, but I wanted to see. So let's, let's look at this. So the weight of this with everything is 640 grams. The weight of the Apple Vision Pro. is 624 grams. So it's actually a little bit lighter than this one. The set does come with a dual band strap that goes over the top of your head, more like a traditional VR headset. And like a lot of other reviewers have said, it does take a little pressure off your face and I think is a little more comfortable for the long-term use. Uh, but if you're just gonna be hopping on it for a few minutes, the single band strap is fine. And I have had a chance to do some work in this thing. Um, like I've seen other people set up elaborate workspaces with like 11 apps floating around. I just find that way too distracting. And working in a totally immersive environment isn't great either because it covers up the keyboard. Uh, luckily, I'm a touch typist, but I hope that's something they can fix in a software update. I don't see why they couldn't. I did find it helpful doing things like Photoshop on my MacBook because I'm always so screen limited on my laptop, but with this, I can make the screen as, as large as I want. Just way more space to work with. It was, it was like my screen was connected to a display that I could make as big or small as I want, place it anywhere I want. And I mean, if you think about like how much a monitor like that would cost, you can almost justify the price of this thing. Almost. Ultimately though, even with the dual band strap, there comes a point to me where the discomfort outweighs the convenience and I just have to take it off. Of course, if you're gonna spend a lot of time in this thing, you need to have some kind of connection to the outside world. And that's why Apple created Personas. Now, if you've seen any other reviews of this device, you've seen how weird these things look and well, here's mine. Okay, so I can see my hands. They're kind of floating in space. I can't see below like my wrist. This does not. I feel like the software has been scientifically calibrated to find Uncanny Valley. Because it's not that it doesn't look like me. It looks a lot like me. I just look like embalmed. Like I know what my open casket would look like now. And that's, that's just, that, that's a great thing to think about. Now, to be fair, it might just be a camera thing. Like, for example, it, it, I took this video of my producer, Damien, and it made him look like a troll that lives under a bridge, when in reality, he's a troll that lives in a house. Zoe. Let's talk games. There's not many. The one that they're pushing the most is called Synth Riders, which I couldn't record actual gameplay of, but it's, it's kind of their version of Beat Saber, which is not available. Beat Saber is better, in my opinion, but coming from the Quest 2, that platform has hundreds of games. You'll never run out of games on that. So this is kind of a letdown right now, but I'm sure the selection will grow over time. I mean, Quest platform's been around for several years now, whereas this one is like two weeks old. So I'm sure it'll get better. So when you're playing back videos, you can watch it in a screen like this, or if you go up to that pan, actually, I wonder if I can just hit it. Let's go to the panorama thing, boom. Okay, view, that's the immersive link. Oh, wow, that is, oh, they weren't kidding. This, this is very disorienting. Now I found the spatial video capture and playback to be surprisingly cool. It made me wonder if we might see a boon in spatial or 3D content. Like, like there's a whole lot of YouTube channels that I watch where people do walking tours of various places, just kind of have it on in the background. I could totally see this being a new way to experience those. But I'll also say that the only time I ever got motion sick in this thing was when I played back a spatial video in immersive mode. It, it really messed me up for a second. Wow, this is trippy. But ultimately I wanted to know if this could work the way I envisioned smart glasses working by adding a, like a digital layer to reality. And I've got to say, this is where I was the most impressed. When you put these goggles on, you can put apps and screens up all over your house. And no matter where you go, they're still there when you get back. So I did a little demonstration in the kitchen where I could put a music player on the wall, a recipe book that walks you through the recipe step by step, and then timers that hover over things when you're cooking so you don't miss anything. And if I want to pull up a YouTube video while that's going on, I can just throw it up on the door, 
And of course, the sound always comes from that direction, from that screen, a screen that casts shadows on the wall. Again, the way they have the screens interact with the environment is maybe the coolest thing about it. All of it looks and feels like it's really there. Oh, and one other really cool thing about the apps around the house thing is that if you go upstairs, you can see through the floor where the apps are downstairs, which is kind of weird, but also, I, I don't know, it, it gives you an interesting spatial understanding of your house. Like, like that's where the back wall is downstairs. That's interesting. So far, my experience with the Vision Pro has been that it's cool, but I still haven't found the killer use case for it that'll keep me coming back. Not to say that I won't find it, but I will say that several times I've had the thought, hey, I should put on the headset, and then the very next thought was, and do what? Like on the Quest, there were games that I enjoyed playing and that kept me coming back, and I don't know, maybe for this it'll be the spatial video, which Apple TV Plus has some really cool documentaries and spatial video that might keep me coming back, or maybe I'll find just the right way to do work with it, but yeah, right now, I'm just not quite sure what that is. So the question that I keep seeing being asked, and it's a very fair question, is who is this for? Like, who, who is actually the audience for this thing? Outside of, obviously, YouTubers who can, you know, make a video and write it off on their taxes. Not at all what I'm doing right now. By the way, if this part sounds kind of hissy and echoey, it's because I lowered the recording volume of this mic for an interview and then forgot to raise it back up again, so it recorded way too low, and then I had to boost it back up again. It's basically the opposite of how I screwed it up in the studio earlier. Again, I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm not more professional than this at this point. I should know better, I just, I don't know, I suck. I just, I f***ing suck. Why do you people follow me? So, I mean, outside of the obvious people who are enthusiasts about VR, which is actually a pretty, you know, small category of people right now, um, I would say is this, it, this is for people who want to see what the future is going to be like. I know, I know, I know, all the Apple haters are throwing a fit right now. It's not about Apple. Like, just for, forget this. Forget about this. Think about where things are going to be, say, three generations down from this one or something. Like I said, I am not a product reviewer, and there's a, there's been so many product reviews of this so far that I don't know what really I could add to it, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna point out the highlights and low lights. I'll start with a low light, and that is this face guard right here. It is only on there with a magnetic strip. It, it pops right off. This is going to break so many of these things, because when you first grab it, you got, you know, the nice shiny outside, you got the metal on the thing, and there's buttons up here, and you're trying to not press the buttons, and you're trying to not smudge, and so you wind up grabbing the obvious thing, but it will come right off immediately i've done it's, it's happened multiple times oh ah okay there you go so when you get one of these everybody who comes over they're going to want to try it it's going to be handed around you have to tell them over and over and over again hold it by the metal because the second you hold on to this you're basically jonah hill carrying coffee except his coffee costs almost four thousand dollars one of the other little low lights I might say is that um, I did try to order the Zeiss prescription lenses because I do have to wear readers, that's what these are, and um, my, my prescription has been rejected twice now so far. I still have not gotten my lenses. So I can't really perfectly attest to how clear the images are here. It's not bad, but it is still a little bit blurry, and I don't know if that's the device or if it's the fact that I don't have the Zeiss lenses yet. So the other thing that people keep saying, I'm just kind of like telling you what I've been seeing in their reviews, is how heavy this is. And it is, it's, it's heavy. And especially when it's sitting on your face, it feels a little bit heavy. It does get kind of hard to wear after a while with this strap. It's kind of fine to just put it on and wear it for a minute. Um, you can put it on your face pretty tight. It will eventually leave a giant ring around your face, absolutely, and it'll mess up your hair. So the eye and the hand tracking on this thing is actually really, really impressive. It's really cool. Um, and it's very intuitive. It's surprisingly intuitive. You pick it up immediately. I did notice that I, I guess my eyes dart around a lot more than I thought they did because I, you have to be kind of intentional with where you look, which is an interesting thing. Like we, the way you look around the room and go throughout your life, it's very, it's very subliminal. You don't really, not subliminal, subconscious. You don't think about it too much. But with this, you kind of really have to think about where you're looking because where you're looking will change what's going on around you. My favorite thing in the moment when I was like, okay, I'm sold, this is where things are going, was when I realized that you can put up a screen 
in the kitchen and walk back to the living room and just you can just put screens and apps all over your house wherever you want them and they stay there as you move around and you do things you take it off you put it back on they're still there again not that you're walking around in this thing all day long but in the future when the form factor is something more like this this is what I'm gonna this is the recurring theme of this video this is just basically a peek inside the crystal ball of what is going to be awaiting for us in the future. So having said that, um, my biggest concern when buying this was that the same thing would happen with this that happened with my Quest 2. I would put it in a drawer and forget about it for months on end and then remember it, get it back out, go play some, some mini golf. There was a game called Walkabout Mini Golf that was a lot of fun. Um, that's my concern is that I would buy this, think it was kind of fun, think it was kind of cool, and then it would wind up in a drawer somewhere. That's still a possibility, but I will say, again, the ability to connect to the computer and have the windows come up, I know that the newest version of the Quest can do that. My old one could not do that, so this is a revelation for me. I could actually see getting some usefulness out of it. But on that note, I've seen a lot of comments that the new Quest 3 that came out in October, about the same time that they announced this, uh, Quest released their, or Meta released their Quest 3, I've seen so many people say that the Quest 3 can do a lot of the same things that this one does. Now, I've also seen reviews from people who extensively use the Quest 3 and use this one and were able to point out that this is better in very significant ways, but about, according to one review I saw, about 70% of what this can do, the Meta Quest 3 can do. In fact, I would, I would go as far, here's, here's, my, uh, here's my bold claim. I think that Meta and the Quest 3 I think, I think that they're going to benefit from the launch of the Apple Vision Pro more than anybody because there's a lot of people that are going to be hearing about this, this constant marketing that's around this thing, including what I'm doing right now, I'll be honest. They're going to see all that and they're going to think, that looks amazing. I would like to see what that's all about, but I'm not going to spend $3,500, $4,000 on a headset. Fair enough. Well, here's this one from Meta that's $500 that does a lot of the same things. I think a lot of people are going to go try out the Meta Quest 3 to see what it's all about. Also, another thing that I'm going to I'm going to like say that this is going to benefit Meta a surprising amount. Meta came out with this whole metaverse thing that was kind of laughed at. I think rightfully so for a lot of the things that they were saying, but this is sort of starting to prove out what that can be. This is starting to show what that layer of reality on top of regular reality could look like. But again, what's exciting about this is not this. Forget about this and think about what this is proving out. This is not the thing that's gonna change the world. This is the crystal ball that gives us a glimpse of the future and what it could look like with smart glasses. I'm not the first person to say this, but this is the worst this will ever be. I think that the, the third or fifth generation of this is the thing that's gonna set the world on fire, um, which, is, which was true of the iPhone as well. When they figure out how to do regular glasses and this sort of form factor, maybe the same form factor as the Meta Ray-Ban smart glasses that I'm starting to see all over the place. When they can get those to do what this thing does, that will be the game changer. And we have a long way to go before something this size could do everything that this thing is doing. But I will say, couldn't help but notice that one of the big splashy things that got all the attention at CES this last year, this last month, was transparent TV screens. And when I saw that, I thought this, that's kind of like, why would you want a transparent TV screen? Because you got the wall right behind it. What's even the point of that? Well, the point of a transparent screen, in my mind, is being able to do something like this. Having transparent lenses that you could see through, but could also put things in front of you. Now, I know that there's a lot more in the terms of the optics so that you can, you know, get everything because it's so close to your eye than that. But that technology is progressing. It's going to continue to progress. But... My prediction, my Jostradamus prediction, get used to the cable. Get used to the cable. The biggest challenge to getting something down to the form factor of something that you could just wear every day and not think about, something that's not a big strapped thing to your face that's heavy and hurts, when it gets down to something like that, or like the Meta Ray-Ban smart glasses like I was talking about, um, the biggest problem is battery storage. Like how do you get something like that that lasts more than a couple of hours? How do you get something like that that can last all day long? I think the only way you can do it is with an external battery of some kind. And hopefully, in the future, the cables won't be quite as big and thick and robust as this. It might be more like, it might be more like when we all walked around with iPods and we had the wired earbuds that 
would go down you know into your pocket it would be like that except the the wires would be coming out of the back of the the glasses into your pocket and uh, instead of just you hearing music it would create an entire layer of reality on top of your own reality so yeah that's that's my prediction i don't think this is going away So I really don't know how much I'm going to keep using this going forward. Um, there's obviously I'm really excited to see what developers come up with and what new apps come out and and new things. I do think it is useful in terms of being able to take a, a small MacBook Pro screen and making it really big in the room. Um, I could definitely if it's if I can get it comfortable enough. I think I could see myself doing work that way. I will say though, a lot of times when and it's not just Apple, but a lot of companies when they talk about you know VR and metaverse and stuff like that. Um, they, they talk about it in terms of a connection. It's, it's an immersive kind of connection. But I will say with this, it's the opposite. I mean, I really do feel like I'm closed off from the rest of the world. You're literally looking at the world through goggles. It's like if you're you know, wearing scuba gear or something like that. You're, you're kind of in your own little self-contained world which to me is the opposite of connection. So I will just say, like, if this is something you're curious about and you want to see how all this works, um, obviously you can just go to an Apple store and test it out for yourself. If you have some extra money laying around, sure, get one. I can recommend it. They're a lot of fun. It's interesting. And it, again, I think it's just, for me, a chance to sort of see where things are going to be going in the future. Now, if you don't have as much as a as your first car laying around and money um yeah i highly recommend checking out the quest 3. i personally haven't used it but the quest 2 was a lot of fun um but i think it's a good starting point if you've never been into this kind of thing before and if you're not curious about it at all i would just say wait three to five years and you will probably be pulled kicking and screaming into this new paradigm just like you probably were when smartphones came along it probably won't be the last time. But one thing you won't have to be drag kicking and screaming toward is the delicious meals that you'll get with today's sponsor, Factor. Like anybody who's a creative or a designer or works in a creative field, they always show that Venn diagram of good, fast, and cheap, and they say you can only have two of the three. Um, same could be said of food. It could be healthy, it could be delicious, it could be fast, but you can't have all three. But Factor has figured out how to break the laws of nature and give you all three. Factor is from the same guys behind HelloFresh who basically figured out how to take those restaurant quality recipes and just send it to you, ready to eat. They aren't frozen, they're cold, but they're not frozen, so you don't get that freezer burn and the weird textures that come with frozen food. Factor's meals are like if you could just vacuum seal takeout from a restaurant, and all you gotta do is pop it in the microwave for a couple minutes. And that's because their meals are designed by professional chefs who work with dietitians to make sure that the meals are healthy and fit into multiple meal plans, from calorie smart to vegan and vegetarian to keto or just chef's choice. You get as many as you need for your family every week or every two weeks, whatever works for you. Each order you have a chance to choose from dozens of meals, including some gourmet plus meals in case you're feeling a little bougie. And you got your choice of add-ons like breakfast combos, cheesecake, and their smoothies, which are just ridiculously good. And because you watch my channel and are clearly a special person, you can get 50% off your first box of Factor if you hit the link down in the description. Seriously, I am an actual paying customer of Factor and have been for a while. Um, it's simple, it's delicious, it's, it's cheaper than takeout, and frankly, I just, I feel better. My pants are a little looser. I recommend them to people all the time. So give them a try, links down below. All right, now you guys go out there, have a third eye opening rest of the week, stay spatial, and I'll see you next Monday. Love you guys, take care. Oh yeah, and the eyes are weird. They're just super weird.